Okay, so hi everyone, we're just going to get started in a minute or so. Um, this is our third webinar and it's all about the basics for using Rosas. So I'll just wait another couple of, just a minute or so, just to let other people get caught up. Okay, so let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the third webinar entitled Introduction to Lotus, Jasmine's Batch Processing Cluster. So, firstly, who is here today? Um, so I am Poppy Townsend, our, our, our Communications Manager, and I'm just working as the organiser and facilitators for the webinar series. Um, so I'll be taking all of your questions, so please email me with the email address at the bottom if you have any questions during the webinar. And our presenter today is Fatima Cheney, who is heavily involved with Jasmine user support, particularly for Lotus, so she's our Lotus expert. So, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, the webinar should last less than an hour, uh, with time for questions at the end. If you're watching live, again, please send your question directly to me and do not use the question box on the webinar tool, because we can't access this in real time, so we we won't be able to answer your questions via that tool, so please, please email me. If you're watching this as a recording, then please email our help desk. Uh, and finally, a uh, feedback form will be emailed to you later on today. Please, can you fill us in this in so then we can get some feedback about how the webinar went and how we can improve it in the future. So, now to hand over to our expert, Fatima. Thank you, Poppy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, with the topic that we're going to cover today will be an introduction on processing capability of Jasmine, um, some definition on Lotus, what is it, and the batch system that works with it. Um, then we cover a bit on use cases and when to use Lotus, and finally, more technicality on how to use Lotus. So introduction, there are many methods available on, on, on Jasmine and the methods that we use are the scientific analysis servers that allows you to do what is called interactive processing and Lotus, which is the Jasmine batch processing cluster. And on top of this two uh, processing capability, there is we provide common software stack like the J Jasmine analysis platform and other tools among them compilers and library that are available uh, via the module environment. Now, the question comes, how to choose? Shall I go and use a site analysis server or shall I move directly to use Lotus Jasmine? It is better to decide based on the problem size that you have on hand. So is it a small or a large processing task? Does it re what are the resources that you require, the memory, the processing units and what is, is it a parallel or serial and also what is it ex exactly you're doing is that some testing development visualization or some proper production analysis uh, workflow so what are the differences between small and large processing tasks so we can group that these two um, uh, well I start with a small processing if your, your problem is considered as a small processing task, then we suggest that you use the uh, site analysis server. If you are running your processing site is a serial or sequential task that doesn't need no more than one single uh, processing uh, unit, CPU or core, so it, there's no parallelism. And it doesn't need more than one hour of uh, usage, you know, the, the wall time or the runtime. And it has a limited memory of, what we'd say, a maximum of two, two gigabytes. And you're doing it, if you're, if you're about to migrate to Lotus, we would still advise that you use the site analysis server as a staging for your tests and prototyping to estimate the resources you need for your job. Now, moving to the second type of problem size when it's larger processing. So we advise that we use Lotus, 
if you're using any, uh, if your large task can be divided up into subtasks and you can run that concurrently, efficiently in parallel. So you speed up. And also if you're using some parallel programming model like uh, MPI or message passing interface, OpenMP, or message passing interface for Python, MPI for Core, or any multi-threaded that need more compute power. So that should be run on Lotus. And any high memory requirements for your job, you should use a Lotus. So why are we specifying this? Because you can't use on a shared machine with other users. That can affect other users um, too. So they, since we are in, in, in talking all about Lotus, and um, we encourage users, as I said, to test prior to use Lotus. And um, Choosing which site analysis server to test, it's good to know what are the uh, capability of those site analysis servers. So you cannot test um, a job that runs at a certain amount of memory on a shared site machine because you're going to affect other users. So an example here, so the, the site machine, the Jasmine Sci1, 2, 4, 5 and the Sem Sci1, they are all eight a multi-core uh, eight um, well eight core machines and each size server size that shares a memory of 32 gigabytes well we have as well a site analysis server with high memory which is around 32 terabytes it's just in side three and some side two so these are the ones that you can use to test prototype before migrating or, or putting your code to lotus so how do you know which one to use? Once you log in uh, to Jasmine through the Jasmine login node, login one, you will be you will have a message of the day displayed that which shows here on the table gives you all the host or the site analysis server on, on available, and it gives you the average load on them. And one thing to pay attention to is the num the uh, CPU usage on the on the right and the free memory on those hosts. So you can choose which one to go and test your, 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 your processing task. So these are very, very uh, useful links um, uh, that you can uh, review later, which are part of the um, documentation. Now, the next topic is when to use Lotus. A big question, and we know, we know the problem side, but we're going to go more in depth when to use Lotus. So if you have tasks with specific resource requirements, the four specific resource requirements are listed as starting with the compute power, how many cores, the, the memory, the size of the memory that your, your job uh, or your task need, how long this the task will consume this memory and compute power, which is the CPU time. And also, in some cases, your code will run on a specific uh, CPU model, especially in the case of compiled languages like Fortran and C, that are very kind of sensitive to um, floating points, uh, fl floating point, uh, art arithmetic. So why do you need to specify? Because it's, as I said, it's a problem. It can degrade performance um, for other users. Also, the uh, um, parallel and C Sequential processing using those libraries, because if they are using compute power, um, they're using some libraries for, for passing communication between process that cannot be done on side machine. And you can also have non-parallel code, sequ uh, sequential code, that needs to run for longer and use high memory. So then use Lotus. More on more complex workflow is when you have a workflow management utilities that you want to run, like the Rose, Rose Silk. So Rose Suite would run just on Lotus. You cannot run it on the site um, um, analysis servers. And if you have some repetitive processing that you can make run all parallel, then it is a good idea to consider uh, um, changing your, your doing some arrangement on your data, not on the code because. I'm showing here an example where you have the same code that need to be run on a set of data files. Then it is the same scripts running on the on the data uh, on, on the set of data mm -hmm. that you can do parallelly 
and each process is independent because each process is using a different data file and you can run it parallelly and efficiently and get your processing task completed. An example like running processing uh, a data file from the uh, SIMIC file um, uh, um, uh, data on the CEDA archive. More uh, on um, Lotus use cases, uh, we have here some uh, examples um, like the uh, HR high resolution climate model uh, output data that, that got processed on Lotus and that has um, uh, effic efficiently accelerated the processing time uh, from three months to one day. We have another uh, application running on Lotus, which is the uh, name uh, is a standalone application to uh, calculate the dispersion, which needs um, a large uh, uh, input uh, of data to be processed, the order or higher than four terabytes. So you need a, la a large, a large memory size to, to put all your files to be uh, um, processed by name. And another and the last example is um, processing um, um, data from uh, Earth observation uh, products um, that needs um, large input and produce as well as another um, um, large output. So a few more links on this. I would recommend uh, to see to have a look to the first uh, example because that shows how uh, processing uh, um, got uh, subdivided into subsets, what we call in embarrassingly parallel, and it, it was about uh, processing uh, data from the SIMIC file archive and make it run parallel, parallel, in parallel and concurrently on Lotus. So what is Lotus? So we know what's the Jasmine processing capability now, we know when we sh should consider using Lotus and that we need some uh, prototyping or testing or staging prior to migrating to or migrating or porting our code to Lotus. So Lotus, as the title of the webinar, is a Jasmine batch processing cluster. But what is a cluster? So a cluster is any a group of collection of computers uh, uh, working together to solve a large problem. An example here, if you take five laptops and nowadays each laptop has four cores or processor, connect them together through some uh, fast network, shows the, the image here, and then you are increasing the compute, uh, compute power from four core to um, uh, 20 cores and, and in this case you have a cluster of laptops and in the in the terminology of cluster a laptop here is not just a laptop because it is part of this cluster and it's considered or called compute node so it's a multi-processing um, compute node of uh, um, four cores so this is just a simple illustration now we're looking more at the, at, the, at the title as Jasmine Batch Processing, so we know now what a cluster is. Now what is batch processing? So batch processing is any application, whether it's a code, it's a script, an R script, or Python, binary, executable, that is not executed interactively or instantly, meaning at the prompt of your command on, on the Linux terminal, you cannot just put the command and hit enter and it's get it starts running. No, but it's it's in in the, in the batch computing. You submit your job to the batch system, also known as a scheduler. So this scheduler that will manage the computer resources and will schedule the application for execution based on a set of policies. So what is the difference between interactive? Since we're talking about interactive and batch, interactive. Um, so the difference for the batch to interactive is that you don't log into the compute node. The communication between, a, uh, you, between you and Lotus is via a batch system. There is no DOE-based environments on the compute node, and the resources on the, compute, on the compute nodes are tightly controlled and monitored. You have a greater power, you have a high memory, 
that things are compute, uh, are all controlled. So that's the difference between interactive. In interactive side, for example, there's no control. Everyone is using at their own, um, and sometimes you can cross side machine um, uh, crashes because someone was using a lot of, lot of uh, multi-threaded, which it shouldn't be, or using a task that uses a lot of memory that can impact on others. And as you know, the side machine's memory is 32 gigabytes only shared among many users. So that just gives you the, the difference between the two. So now, um, how Lotus uh, fits into Jasmine? So these are the components. As I said earlier, you need some submission node, you need a compute node, storage, and LSF. So you're starting from the Jasmine login and the Jasmine um, on your left. So once you log in, you can SSH to the submission nodes. So the submission node is a head node, uh, which is Lotus, that you can use to submit jobs to uh, uh, Lotus. And there's the sign machine, Jasmine sign one to five, and the sales machine. They are all have um, a capability to, to submit jobs to the compute node Lotus, which is here showing as 4,000. 188 calls. We're expecting more, uh, more to come. Um, just um, uh, have a look to the Jasmine Phase 4 uh, article in the uh, useful link at the end. So now the storage, we, we have the CEDA archive, the home, the group workspace. These are all visible and accessible from the submission, submission node as well as from the, um, from, uh, the compute node. As you can see here, I put a dashed line uh, so the compute node can access the group workspace and the home area. And there's an arrow that there is a right operation here while you just can read um, the CEDA archive. And in addition to this three volume as a storage, uh, Lotus has access to two work scratch area. The work scratch here, this one for, um, for parallel right operation and the work scratch no parallel which is opposite so if you if if your code doesn't uh, write um in a parallel mode then uh, you can use this one so i will I'll go through uh, the work scratch area so the work scratch area we have now has a size of 70 terabytes as i said it's just for concurrent rights so if you're running a, a parallel job or a, a job array, for example, and the, I'll talk about the job array because that's, uh, um, well, how can we, we had some issues about this, is that if you're in, in, in Lotus, you can be writing, if you're using a job array and you don't specify in your job script that the output file for every index element of your jobs has a log file, then LSF job will be writing concurrently to one single file. So in this case, if your log file reside under the work scratch, um, that is fine because that is, uh, uh, is uh, Panasis um, allows it here. But if your log file uh, or, or output log of your jobs uh, reside under work scratch your MPI, that will be a problem. So the work scratch M uh, MPI is quite large, 250 terabytes. Um, it's been, um, um, it used a, a new flash-based storage and it has better performance dealing with large, uh, um, large uh, number of small files. There are other systems um, which uh, have con they don't allow parallel write operation. So I'll, I'll encourage you to have a look at to the table in this article 176 storage about uh, group workspaces that reside under the Jasmine 4 uh, storage because these, these, uh, these storage won't allow um, a concurrent write. But I won't be covering this today. Um, so this is just now um, a layout on the Lotus hardware. Why do you need to know this? It is, I think it's good to know this, this, the, the, uh, what is available. So it's a, it's a heterogeneous infrastructure. You can't find it on, on a normal side machine. 
and you see how it's been uh, it's that scalability so every time we new uh, CPU model were added with the new uh, uh, memory sizes which you cannot find this if you are on a single um, a single machine so that's the beauty of having a cluster and also um, that will help you to choose the um, um, appropriate resources especially for those um, running on um, 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 running compiled languages or binaries it is important to know that if you're compiling uh, a, 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 a binaries on a machine with a CPU model uh, different from the machine that runs uh, the, the code, there will be some uh, performance uh, issues and there will be also some um, uh, issues with uh, floating uh, point precision. So we advise that you compile and run the code on the same a CPU model group. This will be um, 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 covered on the next, uh, on the second um, uh, webinar on Lotus uh, next year. So just a quick look in here. So the, as you can see, the Ivy Bridge with 128. We have a lot of hosts of those, and this is uh, um, quite useful because I think the majority use Ivy Bridge, except to others using Broad Wells. So um, more on the batch system, uh, as I said, it's a mechanism to control access by many users. Many users will be accessing Lotus and the access is controlled through scheduling jobs to uh, a queuing system. And why is this um, um, important to know? Because then LSF uh, is so intelligent to uh, check what resources are available and also it will manage your job for you so you don't have to come every time and check it you just submit it and leave it so it's, it's based on a principle of allows you to file and forget many processing tasks and leave lsf to manage the uh, the allocation and all the up file for you so why do we need the batch system we need the batch system First, because it's, 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 a, it's a cluster, it's quite large to, to manage uh, individually. So you need a, a, a batch, which is actually a software that's been optimized to manage resources um, and also to ensure all users get a fair share of compute resources and make sure that the cluster is utilized efficiently. And so, and, and for some times we, we use we use it for tracking users for accounting and budget control and also help us for people who are, um, um, you know, for proposals and so, so we, can, we can do some costing of the, of the CPU time and the storage used. So this can be tracked on, um, on uh, by, the, uh, by the batch system. So what are the batch system? Um, that we have on, on Lotus is LSF. So LSF stands for Load Sharing Facility. It's an IBM product, but there are others like PBS on Archer for those who run models on Archer and there's a SLAR as well. So these are standard uh, um, um, approach to manage a, a, a large a cluster in general. And what all this batch system share, it, the concept of a batch system is based on job queue priority. I'm going to cover the job and queue priority, in, uh, job and the queue, sorry. The priority I won't cover much this time because it's more an advanced topic that will be covered in the next webinar. But I can just mention uh, briefly here that the priority um, is, is for the user, there are different priorities. There's priority at the queue level, which I can um, show it later on and there's a priority on the on the user which is very it's a dynamic priority so the batch as I said job doesn't run interactively it goes through the LSF batch system for execution and when the condition are right what what I meant by what I mean by condition that the resources are available and free then the job is launched now once you submit the job, 
it automatically will have some job attribute. The essential job attributes are three in total. The job ID is a positive integer that is automatically assigned by LSF. You don't have to worry about it, that's a number. As soon as you do a uh, submit your job, LSF will print out on the screen or in your or redirecting output that the LSF has assigned this number to your job. Now you can additionally uh, uh, add um, assign um, a name um, that will be easy um, to manipulate and for reference in your job script or at the submission time. And the third attribute is the owner. So the job uh, the job is owned only by the login name of the user who created the job. And also the last one is the job state. I'm just going to cover under owner. So in this time, your users are sharing uh, resources. Only that user who owns that job can manipulate the job. So he's only who can delete, resume or do, do any manipulation or any control. And the, and the other second person can do this in case when, when a job is causing problem is the, uh, is the uh, batch system administrator. But no other user can, uh, can affect or, or, or modify or manipulate your job. So you're, or every single user is working in a shared and safe environment. Now, um, moving to the queues, um, we have now in Lotus, we used to have a long time ago, just one single queue. Now there are five queues and they're grouped on the number of uh, uh, calls they, they use or they are configured for. So there's a serial queue. The serial queue is only single call job. So if you have a task that needs just one call or one CPU, then you can submit it either to the short serial or the long serial, depending on the runtime limits that you, um, that you, that you need for your processing. So the short serial queue is the default queue and the maximum runtime is 24 hours, while the long serial is not the default queue, you have to specify, request it in your submission, and it has a runtime limit of 168 hours, this is seven days. On both the short serial and the long serial, there is a memory, memory control uh, limit enforced, and I will cover this uh, later. The second uh, type of queues is parallel queues that allows you to run uh, jobs on more than one core or request to run it on more than one core and they all have a runtime limit of 48 hours. So the bar single has a, allows you to run calls to a maximum number of 16 calls but these calls has to be on a single compute node. While par multi, if you're looking at running your job or parallel job on more than 16 calls, mm -hmm. then you should use the par multi, which allows you to have that number. Let's say if you want to run it all on 24 calls, but gives you access to calls in a distribute distribute across many compute nodes. So you can use the par multi for this. Now, if you're having a, a, a task that needs high memory, um, say 200 or more than that, so then you need to use the, the high memory queue. Again, the high memory queue allows you just to use run task using one single call. So uh, some LSF commands, um, some are, are useful uh, here on the table, I put them uh, I classify them as the submission, status command, and control command. So the, the submission command is the BSOP, that's where um, you start communicating with the batch. And then once you submit your job, you can use uh, the command status, which is the B jobs, B his, B queues. And then you can do some job, some uh, manipulation of your job uh, once it's in the LSF batch system using B mode, uh, B stop, B resume, or B kill. I'll cover uh, some of it. And I will also mention that um, all these commands um, are, um, if you want to read more about them and your options, they are all available on the uh, manual page. So if you do, 
on, on the sign machine, if you just do man B sop, it will give you um, all the, the syntax, all the option, all the description. Um, on table two, I put the uh, job states. That's, that's an important attribute to the job. And so the job state varies from the time you submit it to the time it's complete. It goes through from state pen to run to done. It might not be completed successfully. Uh, so we'll have an exit value, which is non-zero. That could be an exit. And you might not want to um, uh, manipulate the job by um, uh, stopping it for some time, resume it. Then the state will change. Uh, to, for example, here, uh, P, uh, suspend, uh, P S U S P, which is pending. So it was suspending while the suspended while it was pending. So these are some useful links here, which are part of the article on the, uh, um, the documentation. I've uh, put the link to the phase four uh, um, article, which contain all the uh, um, um, latest. Um, um, migration to 2004, considering the storage, as well as the Lotus Core. So please watch out for detail on this. Now we move to how to use Lotus. So I'm going to go more in details on the um, LSF commands. Um, but before that, just a, a schematic presentation of the workflow. So just to kind of summarize what I've said earlier. So we're starting from testing your code on a site analysis server gives you this will help you estimate the resources needed to submit the job um, or to submit your task to Lotus. So now, now you have to wrap this command or application within a job script file. So you write a job script, you're still on the sign machine here and you're still on the sign machine, you submit using the BSOP command. So once you submit your job um, so what I said, so you submit, of course, you have, if you haven't specified the queue, that will go directly to the short serial queue as is the default. If you have specified the queue, then it will be uh, queued on, that, on, the, on the queue that you gave. So once on the queue, the job is assigned, um, the job will be on a state of pending or pent, and it will have a job ID number. Now, LSF will uh, do a lot of communication with all the resources and check for uh, uh, the uh, uh, compute nodes that has that requirement of memory um, and uh, uh, cores and also the, uh, the, uh, uh, whether they are all free, it depends what you've put in your, whether you want an exclusive or non-exclusive. So once the uh, resources are available, LSF will dispatch or will launch uh, to your, your job to run on the compute node. So it's, it's, it will be moved to the compute node and it starts running. Well, during the stage between the job, between the queuing and the running, you can, um, you can uh, query on the status of your, of your job using the job status command I shown earlier. Or you might decide that it's not, maybe you want to not run it now, maybe you want to pay for other things, then you might consider to uh, you know, stop it and uh, resume it later. Or maybe even kill it. Maybe put the wrong, the wrong, the wrong resource requirements, so we can go and um, uh, kill the the job from LSF. So in this case, whatever this, whatever you decide here, the job is uh, completed. Then it depends on the exit code, zero or non-zero, and all the output file, the standard error and output file, are ready for you to inspect. So the first um, command to submit um, um, once you are on the site analysis server is BSOP. You can do it directly from the command line as shown here. I just put a, a minimum options here. So BSOP, I'm just specifying the output file, the time, I put 10 minutes. And my command is a simple command, is bin host name, meaning give me the name of the compute node on which this command would run. Simple. Now this is this is okay to use just uh, to pass the argument to be sub directly from the command line, but if this gets more complex when you have many other options, when you have uh, input file for your codes and config file, 
So this line get really long and that will be like a sequence of command. So it is recommended to uh, gather all this in a script file. Uh, for example here and redirect the file um, by the, uh, the less than uh, sign like here, bsub, demo bsub. So I call this file demo bsub. It's a bash, so it's the, it's you have the bash interpreter command at the top. But what you need to do for the for bsub options, you need to put them as you put them in the command line, but you precede them with the, the directive bsub, which is a hash bsub. It has to be in uh, uh, capital, uh, uh, capital letters because it's case sensitive. So the bash, when it's executed, it will ignore this because it won't, uh, it won't process them. They are considered as comments. But because when it gets directed to the bsub, bsub will parse this as part of the argument. So they are read from the directive. So more, import, uh, more, uh, more on the um, um, uh, option to bsub are um, uh, collected here in this table. So the first option is the queue. Um, as I said, you need to specify this if you don't want your job to run on the default queue. The um, runtime, the minus W uh, hours and minutes. So you need to specify the runtime limit if you're, you don't want your job to be terminated after one hour because then the default time will apply. And also writing standard uh, job output and error file. Um, so you want you want to see how your job has. Um, 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 so it's like the evolution how the job, when the job started, when it's complete. If there are any uh, any error messages that get all collected in an output file. If you omit the error file here minus e file name two, so what the the error file it will still be written to the output file. You find everything in one file. Now, one important uh, uh, flag here or option to be sub is the uh, resources uh, uh, requirements. So you can define um, or specify your resources requirement using the minus capital R, R usage, mem equal XX. So here we are specifying the memory that, our, that the task needs, for example, and XX is the, the memory size in, uh, in megabytes. If you want to specify the memory, uh, the memory control limit, then you can use the minus capital M flag and you put the, the value here in, uh, in megabytes. I just mentioned that the units in the past uh, used to be kilobytes, where well, we, ha we have uh, since the last um, two months, three months, over three months, that has changed. So it's all uniform now, it's megabyte everywhere. Uh, minor G, uh, J, G, uh, job name, so you can specify the name. So just substitute what is uh, everything here by the name that you want. That will help you for manipulating job or reference to the job. If it's a parallel job, you need to specify the number of cores. For example, if you put minus N16, so it will be 16 cores uh, are allocated for your job. Um, if you want an exclusive access to the computer, the whole compute node is just for your a job, no users will be running jobs on it, and then you can put the minus X, which is requesting an exclusive execution mode in your B sub command. This will usually result in a longer queuing time, so please um, uh, expect that your job will, will queue longer to make sure that the compute node is completely free of jobs. And the other one is the, um, sec uh, the minus M host group. That is a specified CPU model. I'm not going to cover this, but just for you to know, you can read on the map or uh, um, join, it, join us in the next webinar, as well as on the dependency expression. So you can create some uh, uh, um, dependency trees from different jobs. So you can create a simple workflow that using dependencies um, that is possible in, uh, in, uh, on, on Lotus using LSF and using the option minus W. And, um, more detail on this could be covered next time. And also the uh, job array, so we can use, uh, run some sort of, it's a parallelism, um, an embarrassingly parallel jobs that you can run using job array. And that's again, it's going to be covered next time. So now the queue selection, as I said, um, 
you don't need to put minus q with the q name minus q short serial because short serial is already default default but it's good to have it in your scripts just to get into the habit in case you might need to move from the short series to other queues so if you want a bit and before deciding which queue to use you can use the um, BQs uh, LSF command that can show you uh, the set on the queue and the load on the queues. And this is uh, the output of LSF command is shown here. And uh, you can see the different queues. So what's up here and blue are, uh, uh, arrow here are the um, uh, Lotus queue. Please ignore the other ones. The, the other ones are all private queues. And the default queue is, is the short serial. For example, you can see um, um, this um, this was taken yesterday, quite, quite heavily, uh, heavily pending jobs on, on this queue and uh, comparing to other queues. So the job runtime limits, um, again, if you don't want the default value of an hour to apply, you need to set it. For example, here, I've got a job that just needs 30 minutes. Why if you don't set it, if, if I, why if I don't set it then, LSF will wait, will, will look for, uh, for resources that are going to be free, free for, for one hour. Or, and if you set it for 30 minutes, it does what's called backfilling. So it finds a resource that it can be free for that time. So you can get your job quickly, um, quickly launched. So if it's different than one hour, please set the time. And please remember that the maximum allowed runtime it's very specific, as I've shown, it's 40 hour, 48 hours for the parallel, 24 for the serial, and up to seven days for the long serial. And even if you specify your runtime, um, uh, your runtime limit in your, uh, in your submission, LSF will still ter ter terminate because that's the, that's the threshold. It won't go beyond that limit. Now, the next one is the um, um, resources uh, um, uh, requ um, requ uh, requesting resources. So you have to tell LSF LS, uh, what, how much memory your job uses. LSF cannot predict. It can do a default value for you, but it cannot predict how much how much your job uh, uh, needs. So it's all it's good practice to have some sort of some estimation from either previ previous jobs or if it's a first run job, make sure you don't you don't run it with um, for long, reduce the run time, or maybe run it on, on uh, request on running it on the high memory host, and maybe even request to run it exclusively. But because if it's if it's fail, it will just affect you and not our other users. So it's good to have an estimate. So uh, you can set it with the minus R usage flag as seen here. I'll give you an example here. So minus R. So for example, user four um, wants to submit a job that uses six thousand megabytes shown here. So um, here we have just a compute node. I just give it a simple example. We don't have compute node with four core, but it's just to simplify it. So we have a compute node with four core. Three users are running on this compute node and it has one core free and when you look at the memory the memory size of this compute uh, node uh, example is 32 gigabytes shared uh, by all four cores and now when you look at how the memory is uh, being used you have you can see for example job one is using four gigabytes job two 12 and job three 10 and what's in green is the the, the free memory now lsf had looked a little, had the um, find that this host is switchable because it has six gigabyte free and it has one single core free. So my job get allocated to to this uh, to this host because I I made it specific. Now if you don't um, make the um, the memory um, uh, specific, it will just use a default which is eight gigabyte. In this case, my job will be still waiting or pending because. I will, um, I'll, it won't be allocated to this because it will just take the default that it needs a gigabyte while in fact it doesn't, I just need that estimated to six gigabytes. So it's good to know and estimate how much memory your code were or your code or your task could use. Now, um, with the memory usage, um, um, you need to use the, uh, you need to specify the memory control limit and it's in uh, as um, especially in this is this this is uh, this applied for jobs submitted to the serial queues. 
and um, I'm gonna illustrate here so for example this job here it's used 12 it's use um, the memory is 12 gigab uh, 12 gigabytes and I have to put the limit at 12 gigabytes if I don't put the limit at 12 gigabytes the, the LSF will terminate these jobs even if they have an allocation of 12 gigabytes so um, you need to specify the memory control limit as equal to the same uh, value of the usage. Now some uh, example of um, monitoring job, there's bjobs B -jobs command give you the status of your jobs, active job, and the, there's an option which is quite good, is to give you the, the number of jobs uh, with different uh, states from pending to to running, and this is here, here more other uh, option that you can um, look at, use if you want to look at just a um, pending or running only jobs. Important note on bjobs and dq: please don't use don't run bjobs command on constant loop or frequently every few seconds. This, this will really affect the performance of LSF because LSF has a limit on the number of query that can, can uh, that can handle co uh, concurrently and which affect other users not being able to submit jobs to Lotus. You can also review all the jobs uh, using BHEST, but BHEST needs to, need to know the number of uh, log files because log files get uh, periodically uh, backed up and pruned. And uh, we advise not to use this, uh, try to use maybe log, so just one log file. If you do many log files, it will, it's gonna be, it will take a long time. So uh, better to avoid uh, searching many, many log files at the same time. What you can do in terms of manipulation, as I said, you can suspend, uh, resume, and these are all the commands. You give the job ID and uh, the message could, um, will be displayed to you as stopped, resume, or, or killed. And you can kill the job in run or pending state, and you just use the be kill uh, command. There are other options, but this is just the more important ones to know. To summarize the LSF command and job stays, this is shows you on the left, you submit BSOP, uh, the BSOP, jobs goes into the pen. This is the, the command that you can use that gives you this state, and then when um, the resources are available, the job is, uh, is uh, submitted for running, so the job state changed to run. If you do sus if you suspending, it changed to user suspended, it's going to be uh, system suspended. So it shows you a summary of all the command and that how the job state changes. Now, if it's completed, if it's done, fine, no uh, exit, exit is equal to zero. If it's not completed, you will have an exit value. And then you can look at the, uh, the output, the output files. Um, the output files are good to, to inspect because it's give you on which ho ho com compute node or host uh, your job run, what are the command that's been used, the working in home directory, and also you can see which exit code, which is good to report um, when you have problem. And one more important thing is the section on the resource usage summary that you can find at the very bottom of your uh, output file, as shown here in the figure. But for example, this 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 uh, job used maximum 55. There was no need to request uh, memory because it's less than 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 one gigabyte. Now, reporting by job to issue to CEDA, please provide the job ID number, give us more description on, on the issue, whether it's failed, is it running slow, pending, or unable to submit. Please uh, provide on which uh, submission host were you, and more detail on the, on, on the parallelism, if there's any parallelism uh, implemented, and also some, um, some detail on the input and output. This is mainly for the right operation because the storage is different. There are some storage that allow it, some that don't. And then more links um, uh, for you to read later. Um, and also I mentioned there's a Jasmine dashboard that you can um, go, it's, it's a web interface that'll give you the load on, on, on Lotus, but you can do that directly from your terminal using the queues or the hosts. So we covered the um, um, introduction on Processing capability, we covered Lotus um, uh, as a cluster and uh, its components and also example of how it's been used and the, what are the drivers to using Lotus and all the technicality of using it. Presentation and video of this webinar will be made available and, uh, at um, this link. Um, and thanks to the um, uh, scientific computing department uh, and the um, member of Jasmine uh, CEDA who are uh, um, jointly managing the um, Jasmine system 